Hello everyone and welcome to episode 26 of SSTO Space Program and today is another exciting day in the history of this series because we are not only building another space station around the moon, another cargo terminal, but we are also revisiting both our freighters Charon and Flame Leviathan and we will try to put them to some good use. And uh, as you know, we they those freighters haven't seen much action yet, but we will try to change that right now. And uh, since our infrastructure on the surface of different bodies is growing, we need freighters to deal with the problem. So, first launch for today will be our space station. The space station is relatively large, it weighs around 400 tons when it's entirely dry, and we are sending it with some amount of fuel on board. So the initial launch mass would be around 600 tons. And uh, since I am a bit lazy <laughs> lately, I've decided that we'll launch this station as a single launch. And, um, you know, we'll use our standard SSTO rocket to do that. So, um, yeah, this launch wasn't a, a particularly difficult thing to pull off. And uh, the rocket design, as you know, is a relatively standard thing to do that we've discussed already in the past. And the station, well, was relatively aerodynamic, I would say, for a space station. Well, maybe, maybe not the most aerodynamic thing that you can imagine. But, uh, you know, for a space station, that was, that was okay. And uh, since it's relatively easy to put, uh, you know, enough boosters to actually get anything into space in Kerbal Space Program, this launch was 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 easy, basically. I mean, you know, out, out of all the launches that uh, that they've done in uh, large payloads and large space stations, this one was surprisingly easy. The station flew okay, and uh, we got into orbit no problem, with excess fuel left, and. Um, the station obviously, uh, after separation, had absolutely no means of, uh, you know, changing its position. So we will have to send a uh, tag module to the station, so it will be able to go to the man and, uh, you know, refuel it a little bit. But first, we need to land our SSTO boosters. And as you probably noticed, uh, this time, as usual, I put the heat shields on the wrong side of the booster because, you know, I use them as a high-speed drogue shoots and. Uh, not heat shields really, and uh, we landed on the beach relatively close to KSC. I mean, it uh, with those kind of design, it's relatively difficult to control well where you will land exactly, but uh, it turned out okay. Next step in our grand endeavor in putting a cargo terminal around the man is setting a tag module, which is basically a, a Rhino engine with some probe cores and a relatively small fuel tank and the docking port and basically everything to make it a um, relatively small spacecraft with a giant engine attached to it, that will try to dock to our space station and we will send it into orbit using our new Prometheus SSTO. Um, as you remember, this SSTO is designed to actually be able to go to the MAN orbit and back with uh, payloads that can go up to 20 tons or even more. And um, since we are sending it to the Kerbin's orbit, we have way more delta V than we actually need, and um, since this SSTO also has a relatively high thrust to weight ratio, that launch was really a walk in the park. I actually highly recommend using this SSTO, it turned out to be a great vehicle for large payloads, and we will use it one more time today, and um, it's another actually one of the more useful designs that I've made so far. So docking the um, tag module to the station was relatively easy and I must say that I really like this docking scene probably because it looks like a you know a, a cargo module docking to a space station in reality I mean it looks like a real spacecraft well landing this SST obviously was a uh, walk in the park because it also flies relatively well and uh, with excess fuel you can actually pump it to the front if you need to to control your center of mass a little bit more and we had a text boot landing on the runway, as you can see. Another launches that we had to do were refueling missions. And um, I haven't told you that, but I will now. This entire space station building process has been documented as a music video as well. And you can watch it right now if you want to. The card should be visible on your screen at the very moment. And I would be very happy if you did. But if you decide to stay, there is one more treat for you, because there were two refueling missions, as I told you, and uh, only one is featured in every video. So if you want to see the first refueling mission, you have to go and watch the music video. And if you want to see the second refueling mission, you will have a chance to do that right here. In any case, I'm pretty sure that regular viewers of SSTO Space Program do recognize this vehicle that we are using right now. And this is our standard tanker slash cargo 
ship, SSTO, that we used to not only refuel space station Kerbin's orbit, but also refill them with whatever materials we need to use, because those the tank that you see at the very bottom of this vehicle can be changed to anything else. And this is of course a tank that comes with the uh, USI suite of mods. After two refueling missions, our station is ready to depart and we have enough fuel and therefore Delta V for the transfer burn and for the injection burn at Mons orbit. And uh, there is nothing that stops us from departing. And, you know, with this high thrust Rhino engine, we could actually execute our transfer burn in just one go, which is a nice change because, you know, I'm used to flying SSTOs and SSTOs usually have abysmally low thrust to weight ratio in nuclear mode, so... Uh, the standard procedure for me is actually doing multiple burns, which, which is also something that normal spacecraft do apparently. In uh, you know when you when you are sending them to other places in real solar system, they usually tend to do more, more than one burn. But here in KSP, we we are kind of used to rockets doing everything in one go, or most of the time. Anyway, our station with this giant Rhino engine and high thrust could not only execute the injection and insertion burn in one go, but it was also relatively quick. And after arriving at Mons orbit, we needed to deploy the station modules and our station was operational. If you observe the resources tab, you could notice that we actually arrived almost empty. There is pretty much nothing on the station. And this is where our freighters will come in. So the station will be used as a stopping point for the freighters to transport goods from Kerbin and from other places to the one and uh, we will need to figure out some way to get those resources from and uh, to the surface of the one but before we do that there is another thing that we need to take care of and that thing is refueling our freighters because you know <laughs> those freighters are really cool and they have massive cargo capacity but what comes with that is also massive fuel consumption and um, while landing them on Kerbin for every launch is kind of out of the question, but we have put a number of space stations around Kerbin that are designed to refuel those freighters, and uh, we also have a mod that helps us with multiple automatic launches uh, called Routine Mission Manager, which uh, actually makes the refilling of the refill space station a little bit easier. But how are we going to refuel those freighters when they are out there and the, you know other uh, around other bodies like man or minmus so my idea at least for the caron which uses rhino engines as its main propulsion system therefore it has very high thrust was to add actually a small mining and uh, isru unit to this freighter and uh, use it as a in situ refueling module and with this caron will be able to land on minmus for example or the man for for that matter and refuel itself wherever it lands and uh, with an engineer on board it this process can be relatively fast and but since Karen is a really massive ship I decided that uh, we want to put at least four drills and one ISRU unit to keep the refueling time to you know some some sane length because Delta V wise those freighters can make a round trip from Kerbin to Minmus or Man and back with 1000 ton of payload which means that we won't maybe be uh, sending them very often and technically they could refuel every time they arrive at refueling station. But then um, I'm pretty sure that the you know fuel capacity of Karen or Flame Leviathan will empty any station that we have put in, in the Kerbin's orbit. Which means that uh, having an alternative refueling solution is a great thing. But... Caron is currently sitting in Minmus orbit because we sent it uh, with our uh, Minmus base, as you remember from, I don't know, whatever episode that was. That was quite some time ago, actually. So we are sending again our Prometheus SSTO with this mining module on board with a little bit of extra, you know, RCS and uh, <laughs> solar panels and just a small probe core and antenna. So actually, it is a small spacecraft as well. We'll ditch this extra components uh, once the... Uh, uh, the, the mining module is docked to the, to the freighter and uh, you know now is the docking time and uh, with the module docked the next thing that I would like to do is actually put this to a test so as you can see we have a lot of radiators because we experienced some heating problems recently and I don't want <laughs> this whole operation to be you know sabotaged by uh, a problem with heating 
And now let's try to land this massive ship on uh, Minmus. Uh, now Minmus has a lot of really flat areas, really flat surfaces. So um, it's a very good spot and a very good body to, to land this kind of massive ships that are um, maybe not the greatest for stability. But, uh, you know, we need to put this module to a test and see if this whole concept is actually working. Because Karen, as you may remember, or, or as you just saw, is solar powered. It does not have a nuclear reactor. So, um, I must say that uh, I've tried to estimate power consumption for drills and ISRU and uh, kind of try to predict if the solar panels we had on Karen will be enough to power everything up. And it turns out that, at least on Minmus, during daytime, it should be okay. Whether we'll last through a night is a totally different story. Uh, we totally won't do it on the Mun, but on Minmus I think we'll be fine. As you can see, we are not overheating and uh, we, w we are able to refuel our ship. Uh, takes some time and uh, we are also doing fine with regards to electric charge. Without an engineer, it will take some time to refill the ship to full, but at least we know that there is a viable option to refill Karen once it arrives on Minmus without actually having a dedicated mining refueling station for it. So now we'll send our Prometheus SSTO back to Kerbin, but we won't fly it back completely because it will take quite some time. A trip from Minmus to Kerbin takes over one week in Kerbal Space Program and we have other things that we would still like to do today. So we'll leave it there and we'll focus on something else. And we have one more launch that we want to do today, and a massive one at that. Therefore, we will be using our OCOD2 launch vehicle, SSTO launch vehicle, because the payload that we want to put into orbit is almost 420 tons. And those are three massive cargo containers that we will dock to Flame Leviathan. Because Flame Leviathan is in orbit, and it's fully fueled, as you remember, probably, but has no cargo containers attached to it. And, um... You know, I am still learning MKS, and one thing that I've noticed and kind of keep forgetting about is that um, most of MKS modules run on machinery. They use machinery to operate, and uh, I always keep forgetting about that. Partly because machinery is very heavy, and therefore it's difficult to have enough with, of, of that in your initial launch. But also because I, I simply forget about that. Therefore I thought that Flame Leviathan could be our dedicated freighter for machinery, because it has higher than usual payload capacity, it can actually carry 2000 tons of payload and then 1000, so, um, so it, it's a good choice for that. And Flame Leviathan is also designed in such a way that it's actually easier to attach three massive containers to it than a larger number of smaller ones, therefore it will be our dedicated freighter for machinery. And we are sending three containers, one dedicated for machinery, the other for material kits, and um, the third one for metals. This can be changed, of course, later on, but uh, right now we have um, one container that is half full of machinery, and that is already, you know, 400 tons, so pretty much the uh, the amount of uh, payload that we can put into orbit with uh, OCOD2 SSTO launch vehicle. The good news is that that amount of machinery will be able to refill all the space station that we have currently put in uh, Kerbin's orbit and around its moons and Flame Leviathan will be ready to depart to its first maiden voyage that actually will have a destination, the first, you know, moon or space station and refill it with machinery. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of SSTO Space Program. If you did, please consider liking this video. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comment section below. I would also like to thank Joe Laff and Shirax and all my patrons on Patreon for your continuous support. You guys are great and you help me a great deal. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. My name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.